Hi everyone, Christina here from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Thank you so much for joining me today for some digital making at home. So I'm gonna be coding from my home. I'm currently in the United States in California and I'm excited to have you join me from wherever you are in the world. What I love most about our community is that we are a global community. So wherever you are, let's do some digital making together. So I'm gonna, let's start. I'm gonna go ahead and make my screen a little bit smaller. Whoop, there I go. But now you can see our project. So today I'm gonna be walking you through our medium level project, which will be a scratch project. This is great if you are familiar with scratch and you wanna advance your knowledge of how to use scratch to create a game. If you are brand new to coding and have not used scratch before, I encourage you to do our beginner level project. As we're moving through this project, if it seems to be too easy for you, I encourage you to check out our more advanced project, which will actually be a Python project. So if you're ready, let's jump right in. So we'll be doing a scratch project, specifically on our project's website, projects.raspberrypi.org. So on this project, we're gonna be creating a game in which you need to guide cats to safety and not let any of them fall through the gaps. So let's go ahead and check out a preview for what we're gonna be making. So here, you're gonna see this is where the cats are gonna pop up. And in this game, you are gonna drag the mouse to draw a line with the pencil, which helps the cats get through over this obstacle here. And your goal is to stop the cats from falling into the holes and then get them to the exit. And as you, they get to the exit, you hear the cats meow and you get some points. So let's go ahead and make this project. What we're gonna be learning and doing in Scratch today is we're gonna be using a forever loop and some repeat until loops. So if you're new to loops, awesome. This is a great project for you to jump into. What you're gonna need is you're just gonna need a computer that can use Scratch. So any computer um, is fine and that's all the materials you need. So let's go ahead and move into the next part of our project. So you'll see here on the left side, we kind of have a table of contents of what we're gonna be doing with our Scratch project. So I'm gonna be moving through each of these pieces um, to help us create what we just saw on the previous screen. So the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna open the starter project. So we've got that link here, and that's gonna open up a page in Scratch. And what I love about our projects at the Raspberry Pi Foundation is that we have a lot of starter projects which already have some of the sprites and backgrounds already set into the project so we can jump right in. So I'm gonna go ahead and make myself even a little bit more smaller so that you can see the, both the background and the sprites that we're gonna be working with. Awesome. I'll put me right down here. All right, so you'll see here that we have three sprites, the sprites, the cat, the pen, and the door, and then we already have our background set up. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm just gonna keep the scratch page open, but if you want, you can always go back to the projects page to check through uh, the, what I'm gonna be going through today. But I'm just gonna keep the scratch page open for our project. So first we're gonna start off by um, coding our pen sprite so that it can draw some lines for us. So the first thing we need to do is we're gonna click on our pen sprite. So let's go ahead and click there so we know that we're coding for the pen sprite. And then we're gonna actually add in the pen extension. So we wanna do that by going to the bottom left and going ahead and choosing extension. We're gonna choose the pen extension there. Awesome. So let's go ahead and we're gonna begin with a good old events block. We're gonna click our, we're gonna grab our green flag. So when the green flag is clicked block and move that over, and then we're gonna jump right into using those pen extension blocks. So let's go ahead, we're going to get our block that we're gonna set the pen color. We're gonna grab our erase all block. And then we're going to get our block for the pen size. So what you'll see here is what I like to do is I like to tend to pull over my blocks first, kind of get them all on our script in our script area and then put them together. So with our blocks here, what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna um, connect all of our blocks. So we're gonna go ahead and set our pen color. And currently it's red. I wanna make this color 
to match the background here, to match that blue. So I'm going to click on the color and then to match the blue exactly that's in our stage, I'm going to click this icon right here and that's going to give me um, a matching uh, spot. So I'm going to click on that blue and now I'm going to have that exact blue. So great, we've got that. Then I'm going to add in our erase all block and our set pen size. I'm going to have that actually be five. So I'm going to change that in there. Awesome. All right. So next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some more code to make the sprite follow the mouse pointer. Because so what I want to do is I want to be able to move the pen around during the game. So to do that, I'm going to add in, we're going to use our first forever loop. So that's in our control blocks. I'm going to grab that block, move that over here. And I'm going to grab a motion block. And I'm going to have my sprite go to not a random position. I'm going to have it go to the mouse pointer. And then we're going to go ahead and connect that block here. Awesome. So let's test it out. Great. All right. X. Yes. Our first, first set of code is working. That's a great feeling. Feeling good. Feeling good. All right. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to add some code to tell the sprite to draw a line. Because you see there, there was no line was being drawn and we need to add in that code for it. So to do that, what we're going to need to do is add in a control block. We're going to use an if, then, or else block. So I'm going to pull that over here. So what we're going to say is we're going to say that if I'm doing something, then I want writing to happen. And so what I'm going to do is I, what I want the block to be is if I'm clicking the mouse. So let's go ahead to the sense block. And if the mouse is down, that's a, we're going to use that block. So if I'm clicking the mouse down and we want to control our pen, so we're going to go to our pen blocks. So if the mouse is down, I want the pen to be down. So I'm going to grab that block and then I'm going to grab the pen up. because so I want to make sure that if I'm not clicking the mouse, there's no writing happening. So if the mouse is down, then the pen is down, awesome. And then if it's not, if I'm not clicking the mouse, then the pen is up, so no writing should happen. So let's go ahead and add that into our forever loop. And then let's try it out. I'm gonna go ahead and click the green flag to run our code. Okay, so we are moving here. And now, fingers crossed, let's see if it works. I'm gonna click my mouse. All right, yes, high five. All right, okay, so our code is working and it's great. It's important as you're writing your code to always test it out, right? As you're adding in different blocks to make sure that you've got it working. Okay. So we have got our code. We've got our pen working. Let's now move on to the cats. We're going to clone some cats. So let's go ahead. I'm going to click on the cat sprite. As you saw, the code is gone. That's okay. The code is still with our pen, right? So when you're coding with different sprites, if this is new to you, what happens is you code with one sprite, but now we're going to move to a different sprite and add some code to that sprite, uh, to that script area for this sprite. So what I want to do with the cat is I'm going to add code where I'm going to hide this cat and then I'm going to clone it every three seconds. So we have to have an events block. So let's start with our flag. And that's always a good practice to use the same events block to, to run your code. So since I used the flag block with the pen, I'm going to use the same thing for the cat. Now I'm going to add in a hide block. And then I'm going to pull in another forever loop. We're, we're loving the forever loops today. So I'm going to pull in a forever loop and I want to make a clone. So I'm going to scroll down. That's going to be here at the bottom. We're going to create a clone of myself, not me, the cat. And then we're going to wait, um, have a wait block. So what we're going to do is when the green flag is clicked, the sprite is going to hide. And then we're going to have a forever loop where it's going to create a clone every three seconds. So it's going to keep doing that. Now what you'll notice though, is that if we run this code, not, we're not going to see anything just yet because currently we have it where this sprite is hidden. So it's making clones, but we're not seeing them anywhere. So what we now need to do is we need to add some code that's going to show us the clones that are popping up. 
So let's go ahead and add in another block. We have our hide block, now we need our show block. So we're gonna have a show block. And then we're also going to get in some blocks because what we want to do is we want these cats to clone and we want them to fall down from the top of our screen. So let's go ahead. We're going to have the show block. Let's also grab a repeat until block because what we're going to do is we're going to have the clones repeat themselves and fall until they touch this area on our backdrop, this blue area. So we're gonna add in a sensing block. So we're gonna have it touching a color. And then we're also going to add a motion block to have the cats drop. So where is, okay, so since we want it to drop down, and as you may already know, Scratch has like a Y and an X axis. So we want something to drop down. The X axis is the, the excuse me, the Y axis is the vertical axis so that that it vertical axis so that's up and down so we're gonna change our Y so I'm gonna pull that block over here we're gonna have that be negative um, since we're gonna have it drop I'm gonna have it drop by negative two so now let's put all of these blocks together so we've got um, our clones happening and what we're gonna actually do is there's a block that we can use now that we have clones we are going to, when I start as a clone, so this is gonna be for the clones, we are going to show the clone, and then we're going to use the repeat. So repeat until the clone is touching this blue here. So as we did before, we're gonna change that color to be the exact blue color by matching it. All right, nice work. And then we're gonna have it change by negative two. Okay, moment of truth, we're gonna see if our code works. Yes! Okay, we've got cats falling from the sky, multiple cats, we are cloning, cats are falling, and they are stopping right there at the blue. Perfection, high five, <laughs> boom. All right, let's go to the next part. What we are going to do now is we are gonna make the cats move. So right now they're dropping, but once they hit here, once they get to the blue, I want them to walk across the screen. So to do that, we need some movement. So let's go to our motion blocks. And we're gonna have, we're gonna pull out our move block. And then we are going to, um, to help our cat look like it's moving, we're gonna change up the costume. Cause this sprite actually has two costumes. I'll give you a preview right here. You can see the two costumes right here, and you'll notice that the legs are different in these two costumes. So as we, if we set our code to switch those costumes, it'll look like the cat is walking across the screen. So let's go ahead, we're gonna grab a looks block, which is going to be, we're gonna use our next costume block. Then we're also gonna grab another forever loop. I love forever loops. And then we are going to grab a weight block. So we're gonna set these up. If you wanna try before I do it, just to see if you know. Um, so how we're gonna set these up is we're gonna put them, we're gonna add this forever loop actually right under the show block. So I'm gonna move our repeat block out of there. I'm gonna add in a forever loop. So we're gonna set this up that we want all these things to continue happening till we tell it to stop. So for forever, we want the blocks, or we want the cats to move 10 steps and we want this to repeat until it touches the blue color, having it change by negative two as it falls. And then we want the next costume as well, and we're gonna have it wait. So it's gonna go through all of these here and then like continue to repeat until we tell it to stop. So we're gonna have it clone. It's gonna create a clone. All right, the clone is going to fall, then it's gonna start moving. Oh, excellent. All right, it's moving. It's actually going pretty slow. So I think I'm going to speed that up a bit. I have it at one second. So I actually change that. I'm gonna change that to one um, tenth of a second. So 0 0.1 to have the cats move a little bit faster. So the cats are dropping, they're cloning. Ooh, I like that. That's great. Okay, cats are moving really fast. Let's continue. What you're gonna see now is we're gonna um, use 
the, I'm going to run the program again, and I want you to see, I'm going to use the pen that we coded as well to draw a line here. So that's great. So what's going to happen is now it's going to walk across and our cats are going to keep going. Great. So they're going to keep going, but now like nothing happens over here. So we have to set this up as a game, right? We want something to happen when they reach this side. So the first thing we're going to do is if they touch the edge here, we want the cats to like disappear. Right now they're just like hanging out. So we should have the cats disappear if they touch the edge. So let's, I'm gonna move out this block, or this set of blocks here, and we're gonna have a repeat block now. Before we had a forever loop where it just kept going on forever, but now I'm gonna switch up that loop now that we know what, we're, um, what we want to happen, and we're gonna have it be a repeat loop instead. So I'm gonna move out the blocks that are inside this forever loop, say goodbye to our forever loop, and now I know, okay, we've got this code working. Now what I want is I want the cats to actually disappear um, when it touches the edge. So I'm gonna have this be a repeat loop and I'm moving that same code as before and I want it to repeat until it touches the edge. So that's a sensing block. So let's go ahead, we're gonna have it touch the edge. Here we are. Let's change that to edge. Put that in here. We're gonna need to add one more block to actually make that happen, which is that we want the um, we want our clones to disappear. So I'm gonna to go to Control, and at the bottom of Control we have a delete this clone. Okay, so we just changed up our code a bit. So let's actually see if it works. So I'm gonna run this code again. We've got our cat still dropping. Okay, so that that code hasn't um, changed. Then we've got the cats are still walking, our pen's still writing, cats are moving across the screen. Okay, awesome. Now you may have noticed that my cats were kind of walking through the blue. So we're actually gonna fix that in a little bit because I want them to stay on the top of this. Let's run that code again. And so we had set it up where if the cats hit the edge over here, they disappear. But what you'll notice here is if the cats hit the edge here, they're not disappearing, they're just falling through. So we actually need to modify our code a little bit so they'll also disappear instead of just gathering there at the bottom. That's kind of sad. So <laughs> to do that, we're gonna add um, a few more blocks so that it repeats until the cat sprite is touching the blue or touching the edge. So for both of these, so right now it has touching the edge, but we also wanna have that piece, we wanna add touching the edge down here as well. So I'm gonna modify this block. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in um, an operator block. So we're going to have an or operating block. So to make this one, it's going to be touching the blue or, and we're also going to add touching the edge as well here. All right. So we're going to add that in. And then now our code, we're going to put it back um, into this section here. Okay, so now this is gonna repeat until it's touching the edge. It's also going to drop and then it's going the, it's going to either delete, the clone It's gonna delete itself. It should delete itself either at the edge um, for both of these, either at the edge here at the bottom or the edge to the side. So let's see if that works now. So we're gonna run the code. So for a cat that walks across and it just falls, it should just keep falling. Okay, great, and then same here, oops. Okay, so those are falling and they delete themselves. Then this cat too, it's gonna walk across and it also should delete itself on the side. Great, okay, cats are cloning but they're also deleting, so it's exactly what we want. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna address that piece that I just mentioned where we saw that our cats if I draw this line, they just kind of kept walking through the blue. I want them to stay on top of our blue kind of cliffs area. So to do that, we're gonna add some code right above our next costume code. And what that code is gonna be is that we want, it's basically going to have the cat change, like move up. If it starts to hit this blue, it's gonna move up until it's touching, like if it touches the blue, it's gonna move up so it gets on the top of the blue. So let me go ahead, I'm gonna grab a couple of blocks here. First, a sensing block, so touching blue. We're gonna grab a repeat block. 
as well. Let me find it. Oh, here we go. We're also going to grab an operator block and you'll see why in a second. So a not operator block. And then we're gonna have a change by two block. Um, specifically change Y by two because we want it to move up. So instead of walking through, I want it to move up on this edge and then walk across at the top. So let me find my change Y, here we go. And that should be, yep, all of my blocks here. So what I'm gonna have is that I'm gonna have repeat until it's not touching the blue. So when it walks towards the blue, it's gonna hit it. So I'm gonna have it be that when it falls, what it needs to do is that it's not gonna to touch the blue. So let me, or repeat until it doesn't touch it. So let me go ahead and change this color here. Ah, sorry, I messed up. There we go. All right, and then we're gonna have it change by two. So what this um, set of code is, I'm gonna add this right above our next costume, right here. So that's gonna set it up that it's gonna change by two until it's not touching the color blue. And you'll see what that looks like right now. So I'm gonna actually draw this lower so you can definitely see that what it looks like so it's not gonna walk through here. So the cats are going to walk, then they're going to fall, they're touching the blue, and then it's gonna move them up so that they continue to walk on top and not walk through this blue like it was doing before. So great, our code is working, solid. That's, that calls for a high five, awesome. All right, so next we wanna actually do something with the door now. So we've got our cats moving, but we actually wanna set it up. Okay, the door is like is the safety. We're trying, the game, point of the game is to get our cats to safety. So let's go ahead and we're gonna add code to our sprite to add one to the score every time a cat reaches the door. So to do that, we're gonna go ahead and add a variable. If you haven't done this before, congratulations. You're gonna add a variable for the first time with Scratch. We're gonna make a variable and we're gonna call it score. All right. So now we have the score variable here and you'll see we've now added a score um, up at the top in the corner. And what we're gonna do is add some code so that when the cat touches the door, you're gonna change the score by one. So the first line of code we're gonna add is the events. So that's going to set it up so that like it's a new game each time. So we're going to have when the green flag is clicked, we're going to add in um, the code or our score code. So we're going to set our score to zero. All right, move my code around a little bit. So I've got some more space so you can see it all. And then we're also going to add some code so that when the sprite, the cat sprite touches the door, we get a point. So to do that, we're gonna add in an if then block. So the if then block, I'm gonna pull that over right here. We're gonna add a sensing block. So touching, we're gonna have that be touching the door because that's what we want to be the condition to give us a point. And then we're gonna have, we're gonna change our score by one. So let's put those together. So if it's touching the door, so since we're coding for the cat, if the cat is touching the door, we're gonna change the score by one. And we're gonna go ahead and add this right there at the end. All right, great. So let's see what happens. All right, we've got our cats dropping. They're cloning, all right, they're continuing to clone. Cats are walking. They're walking across, oh, they're hitting the blue, they're moving up. All right, code is still working and let's see what happens when we hit the door. Oh, we get points, we get points. Excellent, points are happening. All right, the code is working, yes! All right, next up, what we're going to do is, we're gonna, now the cats are excited, right? So let's add some sound, why not? Let's add some sound for the cats so when they hit the door, they are going to express their excitement and um, have them also when they hit the door, if they hit the door, like we did it, right? Like, so they should delete. We're gonna have the cats disappear. So we're gonna use the um, delete clone block again. So now we've set it up. Okay, so 
let's do this. So we're going to add this same code to our um, if then statement. So if it's touching the door, we're also going to have the cat meow and we're also going to delete it. So now we have it that if there, if the cat touches any edges, it's the bottom edge or this far edge, it's going to delete and then, or it's disappear or the delete um, this clone block. And if it touches the door, we're going to get a point, we're going to get a meow, and it's also going to delete. So fingers crossed this code works. Let's see what happens. It's going to drop. All right. Oh, I need to draw this in. Ah! Okay, there we go. Okay, it's going to drop. All right, it's going to move up. And all right, we've got a meow. We got a point. All right, we've got another point. Awesome. Okay, this is great. Yes. Okay, our code is working. So, what I recommend, if maybe if your code's not working just yet, check some of your um, some of the blocks, especially ones where you have to change either the colors or change what it's touching. Especially those sense blocks tend to cause some trouble. As I was um, going through this project earlier, I realized I had forgotten to change some of those. So I had some errors in there. So making sure your sense blocks are touch are um, the right um, piece you want, making sure that the color actually matches the exact blue, and then making sure like the order of your code is similar to mine here. Okay, so now we've got like the basics of this game, right? And this game like is pretty easy. Let's be real, right? It's actually a really easy game. So the next steps for you are like, how can you make this more challenging? Maybe you can add in a background that changes every couple of seconds. Cause right now it's just, we have one um, area right here that's dangerous for the cats, but you could have this change every couple of seconds for the player. You could also have the door move around, right? You could have the door go to a random position every couple of seconds. So you're having to draw in the pencil so that it gets up to the door. Maybe it's moving around the space, right? And it changes. That could be really interesting. Um, you could also add more sprites, potentially moving obstacles. So if the cat touches another sprite and you can add sprites right behind um, me, I'll move myself so you can see that. You can add sprites here at the bottom. That's where you add sprites. You can also upload your own sprites, right? So if you have a, if you have a cat, you could add in pictures of a cat, add, add in pictures of your cat. You can also add in a, a different background. Maybe you can design your own background uh, for the different obstacles that the cats might see. Then you can, there's, I mean, there's so many different ideas and I wanna encourage you to really uh, take on this challenge to create a game that is that has your, your flair to it, all right? So that is it for our cats game. So what you can do is after you create your game, share it with us. You can go to rpf.io forward slash home. And that is our digital making at home page. And there you can submit your project. We'd love to see it. And there you can also learn more about upcoming weeks and future themes that we're going to be doing because we want to keep coding with you. I'm going to keep, I'm going to be coding and doing some digital making at home and I want to see what you create. So I'm excited to see what you all submit. Definitely feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions.